There was the head of a school. They came to Rosh Hashanah Arbach. Distraught. He had just come back from a psychologist. And the diagnosis wasn't great. He was on the verge of collapse. The psychologist told him that you're, you're, too, you're worrying too much. You're carrying the whole world on your shoulders. And you're going to collapse. And the psychologist wanted to prescribe medication and wanted him to take it easy. And it really wasn't a great situation. The person came to Rosh Hashanah for for help, for Eitzah, for advice. What should he do? Shem Zalman, of course, didn't belittle what the psychologist said, but he said, maybe there's something we can try first. He asked this head of a school, or Rosh Kailu, head of a school, whatever it was, how often do you have this problem? That you feel crushed, that you feel like you're carrying the world's burden. So he says all the time. He says, why do you feel that way? He says, I have to make a payroll, I have to raise a lot of money, big salaries, not so much tuition. Shlom Zalm says, I hear. And what happened last year, let's start with. And this head of the school says, we made it through. Shlom Zalm says, and last month, we pulled through. It, it was difficult. Baruch Hashem, I was able to get it together. So Shlom Zalman says, I don't understand. You pulled through last year, you pulled through last month, and you keep on making it. So why are you walking around so crushed? And as he realized that his words were hitting a mark, Rishab Zaman continues. And he says, you know what you should do? It's because it's not cognizant. It's not at the forefront of your mind. Which is normal. Which is natural. Because the worries and the burdens weigh on us. Rishab Zaman said, take a notebook. And this is going to be your notebook of things. Your pinkest shel haida. And in this notebook... Any time that you saw a salvation, any time that there was a problem, and you saw it worked out, write it in the notebook. And then, when you come to Maidim Mishman Esrei, don't just say the words. Think about what are you thankful for. Pull out your notebook and read all the wonderful things that have happened to you. Last week, I didn't think I was going to get this, and it worked out. And think about it for a few moments. And you'll see that slowly the anxiety and the crushing burden will disappear. And Rosh Hashanah concludes and tells the man, in the times of the Beis HaMikdash, there was something called the Karban Taida. You brought a Karban. What was the Karban when you wanted to say thank you to Hashem? It was 40 tremendous loaves of bread. And there were very specific halachas, of course, how long to eat that bread. A very short amount of time. So how could I eat 40 breads in a day or so? So the answer was, you invited your friends. And Rishon Zalman said, they used to invite up to 100 people to eat and consume these 40 tremendous loaves in the daytime period. And what would happen? You would tell your friend, I'm going to the base of Igdash. I'm going to bring a carbon. I have to say thank you to Hashem what was done for me. What are you saying thank you for? And you'd explain to the first person. And then you explain it again. And each and every person you would retell why you're so thankful to Hashem. And then all the people, when they would come and they would have this festive meal eating these loaves of bread, they would also feel the thanks. And they would all be part of this greater miracle and not necessarily a miracle. Whatever reason this person was thankful. Says Rishon Mazalmin, in such an environment, everyone walked around with the realization on the forefront of their mind how thankful they were to Hashem. Because this was a common occurrence. And he turned to this head of the school and he said, try it. This way will be more realizing what actually happens. And it seems like you don't have that much to worry about, more than everyone else. Are you the only principal? Are you the only head of the school? You're the only one that has to make payroll? And we could translate this. Are you the only business person that's struggling? We're all struggling. Are you the only person that's having a difficult time? Doesn't have to only be money. This could be in any area. Let's expand it a little bit. We're all stuck at home. We're all in a difficult situation. So we have to realize, but wait, don't crush. Don't walk around anxious, anxiety, 
in pain? Think about it. What could I be thankful for?